Oh my goodness gracious, I am tired. I am very tired, but I've had a good day, and I've had a, uh, a productive day. Hello everyone, and welcome to Tuesday. Uh, before I jump into the meat and potatoes of this vlog, let me quickly say that I have continued to feel good. Um, I know that the last few weeks or months have been a little rough in terms of uh, mostly my sleep, but um, things continue to, to progress. They're not better yet, but they are getting better, and it's, um, it's welcome. It's certainly a welcome thing to actually get some gosh darn sleep. Um, I'll be talking more about this as, as we go on, but uh, just know that there are continued improvements every day, which is nice. Uh, the big thing for me today was that it was time to do another First 20 stream. And in the same vein as so many of the other vlogs I've done on this subject, I'm going to be talking about the games I played in May 2021. So this first 20 stream was really interesting because usually there's a mix of games that I let viewers vote on and games that I am playing no matter what. Usually I play games no matter what if I've requested a key personally. I get a lot of dev keys that are just sent to me. I didn't ask for them. I don't know where they came from, but I'm on some sort of mailing list somewhere and I just get dev keys sent. Sometimes I request a dev key. If I request a dev key, then I feel like I should probably play it. I feel like that's like the right the right thing to do since I personally asked for it. Um, but I didn't have any of those games this time. So I decided what I would do because I had so many games that I could show off um, that I would put up everything to vote. So um, that, that made this stream really interesting. And because I had nine games, which is kind of a lot for a single poll, we divided it up into three polls. Uh, I used a random number generator to randomly put the games into three different groups. So we had a poll between three games, and then again, and then again, and that gave us the three games that we were going to play. And then I took everything that got second place, and that became its own fourth poll. So we did four different games today, and uh, I don't remember what was in the running for all of these polls, but the first game we played was Roki, and uh, Roki is a game that was sent in uh, by Curb uh, some time ago, and uh, it's actually, I believe Roki has actually been one of the games that could have been voted on in the past, and it just didn't win at that particular time, but it won today, and um, it is a, it's an adventure game, um, a narrative adventure game about uh, Norwegian uh, monsters and mythology, and uh, I, gotta, I gotta admit, I was really impressed. I mean, we're, we're only playing the beginning of a game, so if the beginning of the game can make a, a pretty strong impression, that's good, and I think it made a pretty gosh darn strong impression. Um, you, uh, the, I'm gonna butcher all of these names, but you play as um, Tova, uh, who has a younger brother, Lars. They live with their uh, father up in the in the mountains. And um, well, you know, in a very short amount of time, some, some bad things befall them and you kind of realize um, where the game is taking you and what kind of tone it's setting forth. Um, it's, it was really well done. The music was really good. Uh, the dialogue was really good. Um, just, uh, th there's uh, some light puzzle solving. It, it plays very similar to a point-and-click adventure game where you, you collect items and then you have a, uh, you have to, com like, maybe combine items or drop the item onto the thing you want to interact with. Um, never, like, terribly, terribly complicated, but I think that was probably good because it kept things moving. And again, we played about half an hour of it, and a lot happened in that time, and I really liked it. I think that uh, folks should definitely check it out if they're in interested in something that is um, heartfelt. It's, it's like a heartfelt narrative that is definitely leaning more into spooky. It's not like a horror game, but there's definitely a lot of spooky, uh, somewhat light scary elements, and uh, I thought it was really cool. 
Uh, let's see, the next game we played, uh, again, everyone voted on these. The next game we played was uh, Mayhem in Single Valley, and that was a dev key. And um, Mayhem in Single Valley is, it's a game where the apocalypse takes place, and you are, I don't know what the, the end goal is. I guess you're probably just trying to survive or something. Um, the, the circumstances in which the apocalypse happen are a little bizarre. Uh, the art style is really cool. I really, I've always really liked the the look of sprites in a 3D world. Um, it reminds me very much of uh, like a voxel-based game, and uh, I think I think it just looks really cool. The this particular game was really interesting because there's no there's no way to fight back that I saw uh, in the game. You're you're constantly uh, running from enemies, and there's a lot of puzzle solving, but the method of dealing with enemies is that each enemy seems to have a particular item that they are distracted by, and then you throw the distract the distracting item, and then they're distracted by it. So, like, if it's a bunny, it's a carrot. If it's, you know, a bear, well, we never figured out what the bear thing is. <laughs> There's specific items. If it's a squirrel, it's a nut, for instance. We saw that one. Um, and uh, it's... That's fine. Uh, it, I think the thing that was so weird about the game is that the beginning of the game, which is like trying to set up the story, is very, very different than the core gameplay loop. Um, the, the beginning of the game, I actually felt, was in, in some ways stronger than the core gameplay loop. I actually found the core gameplay a little boring. I, I feel that the because you could not attack, um, it made it... I mean, it made it really, really difficult for one, but also there was just, there's so many items and so many things to keep track of in terms of like distracting the enemies that it was kind of, um, it was a bit of a headache to be honest. And it's so strange because I, I actually really liked the, uh, the beginning part, which admittedly the beginning part was too long winded. They give you this huge to-do list. So it was a little long-winded, but I actually really liked where that was going, and I liked um, seeing all of the art uh, within, like, the the neighborhood and your your neighbor in the backyard grilling. Um, whenever you finally break out and you start into the actual, like, game part, uh, I, I actually became a lot, a lot more disinterested in that. Um, and that might change, like, as the game goes on, maybe things get a little bit better. Um, but I felt it was a little bit slow and not being able to... Um, attack or like overtly defend yourself um, was uh, was strange. Also, when you first get to the the part of the game where you're like actually like dealing with enemies, it's a, it's a little overwhelming because they just dump you into this area. You've never fought an enemy or dealt with an enemy, and all of a sudden there's like 20, and I was getting like chased down. Um, it got better, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, very mixed opinions about the the, the game. I, I think that maybe it could get better as it goes on, but um, you know we spent half the first twenty just establishing the story, and then the other for, the other half was just you know completely different. Anyway, that was mayhem in uh, in Single Valley. Uh, let's see. After that, we did uh, Turnip Boy. Turnip Boy commits tax evasion, and this was a game that. Um, I mean, it, and you can probably tell just from the title, it's absolutely created for the lulls. Uh, it is a, a comedic game, and um, it knows its target audience, and it goes after them ferociously, and it does, a, I mean, admittedly, it does a really good job. Uh, it is it is a game, uh, it, it's kind of in the same vein as uh, a, a Zelda title, like a 2D Zelda title. Um, but really, you're playing it for the jokes. You're playing it for the dialogue, and the dialogue is extremely well written. Um, also, the game itself looks really good. Um, it has a very clean feel. Like the, um, the 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 sprite work and stuff is is exceptional as well. But also, like the menus and uh, the the dialogue boxes and everything, um, the the character art that's on screen whenever you're you're doing dialogue is all just very clean. Um, speaks to my, my, my graphic designer heart, it was really, really nice. Um, so I really enjoyed that. But, you know, as far as the game portion, 
There's not a lot of game there, and maybe that's fine because maybe what you're after is the comedy. I would assume that if you're you're playing the game, then that's one of the reasons you're you're playing the game. Um, but don't expect anything deep here. There's there's not a, there's not a whole lot of, of, of deep gameplay here. Um, the the puzzles and stuff that we encountered uh, during the first twenty, very simple. The combat extremely, extremely rudimentary and simple. And uh, again, that's fine. That's fine, just know what you're getting into. The jokes, however, are great, and the dialogue is great. And again, like I said, they know who they're, they're, they're going after. Um, there's an entire like mini quest about someone who does streaming, and uh, they really want a tier three sub, and there's a sandwich shop that sells tier three subs. So like, they they're they're really playing to like the Twitch crowd here, so they know their audience and they're they're doing that really well. But I mean, was it fun? I mean, yeah, it was fun and it was funny. And uh, if you're looking for a, a very light, casual game that's going to make you laugh, I have no idea how long it is. I suspect it's not terribly long. Um, then I think that's one to definitely, you know, look into. Uh, I had fun with it, and uh, I was laughing. And there was a lot of really well written stuff, and also it gave me a chance to do. Uh, funny voices, which I always appreciate. Uh, so that was the, the three that were voted on, and then we went to the second place ones, which got their own poll, and everyone voted for... I say everyone. It was nearly a tie, really. <laughs> we had a few near ties today. Uh, but everyone voted for Erica, And uh, Erica is a FMV game. It's an FMV uh, thriller game. It, 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 it's marketed as a thriller. I would say that yeah, I think that's true. It is a thriller, but there's definitely some light horror elements for sure. There's there's definitely a bit of spoop. A little spoopy there. Uh, this game originally came out in 2019 on the PS4 and it has remained on PS4 until literally today. Uh, the embargo lifted hours before I, I did the stream. And uh, it was also, you probably could tell it was a dev key. Turnip Boy was a, a dev key as well. Um, so yeah, it, it, uh, it basically just came out on PC, so now you can play it on PS4 and PC. And the production values are really, really high. Um, I think that's one of the, the most notable things is that, uh, you know, I really like Shapeshifting Detective, but the production values on Shapeshifting Detective were not the best. Um, even, like, just the way it was shot was not, you know... Any, it, it could not compare to the game that we played today. And it's not that shapeshifting was, was bad, but like this looks like a television show. It was definitely shot with a, um, a better camera, a better lens, had a better DP, um, and they really knew what they were doing um, and probably had a, a much better game plan going into it. Uh, the, the question was, was it good? I, I think so, yeah, it, it, was, it was enticing. Um, at the beginning, there's not a lot of input, but once you're, you know, probably 20 minutes in, it just starts rolling and there's there's different ways to, to I mean, potentially, what, what we understood, uh, to influence the story. Um, and it is, it's intense. Uh, it's, it's certainly much more intense than Shapeshifting Detective. Um, it, and if you liked the lighthearted tone, then you may not like Erica because Erica is pretty. It's pretty heavy. Um, there's there's definitely some. I mean, just in the you know the 30, 40 minutes that we played, there there was definitely some heavy stuff that 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 transpired. Um, but it was good. I thought it was good. And whenever I'm dealing with stuff like that, I know that the audience isn't always super excited about. Uh, you know, horror stuff and um, stuff that, that might put them on edge. So I'm always like cracking jokes. Um, and I, I was cracking quite a few because there was actually a lot that uh, that that was, uh, I, I would say, would put them on edge. But it was good. It was it was good. And if you like FMV games, if you like this sort of game where you can, you just kind of sit down and um, you're basically watching a movie that you get to control, really. Um, and has a lot of replay values, or so it says. Check it out. Check it out. It's on PS4 and uh, PC. And again, it's super new on uh, on PC. So, um, yeah. I liked it. I liked it. It might be one that uh, Mal and I look into. Because that's actually how we did Shapeshifting Detective, is I, um, 
I had done the first 20 of it, and then I was like, oh, I think this would be fun. And then Mal and I played it uh, on stream. So maybe Erica could get the same treatment at some point in the future, depending on how long it is. And that's it. Those are the games I played. Um, we almost played a fifth game, because I had told uh, I had told chat there, when we had the, the last poll between the, the second place ones, um, Erica and another game, uh, Seahawk, were, they literally tied with, and then there was a third game that did not tie, but those, those literally tied, so Chaz re-ran the poll with just those two and excluded the third option. And I told Chad, I was like, if you can get these to act, to like match perfectly, I'll play both. They didn't quite get it though. They had, they had gotten the tie the first time, but they couldn't get it the second time. They were a little off. So um, we just did Erica. But I'll keep Seahawk in the uh, in the queue for for another first 20 stream sometime because uh, people seemed at least semi interested in it. Um, but yeah, that, that was uh, that was that was a stream. Uh, certainly a variety of games because we had um, you know a comedy game. We had uh, you know a horror FMV or a th thriller 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 FMV, an adventure narrative game, and then. Uh, Whatever mayhem in Single Valley qualifies as, I'm not exactly, not exactly sure. Um, but it was fun, and uh, I always appreciate folks coming out and hanging out while we uh, try out new games. Um, I mean, you really just never know what we're what we're gonna what we're gonna see. And that's the thing is that there's games being made so fast these days. There's no shortage of games to play and games to try. And um, that's also one of the reasons why I know people value First 20 so much is that so many games that you just don't know all the games that are coming out. So getting a chance to see something that's a little more curated to just be like, hey, I get to see you know 20 or 30 minutes of each of these games. It can help me decide if there's any of these I want to play. I know that can be helpful. So hopefully this, uh, this video helped determine um, maybe some of the First 20s that are coming out soon that you'll want to check out. And with that, I'm done. I gotta tell you, I am, I am tired. And it's good because it's, you know, it's time for bed. But I am, I am really, really tired. Um, the, the first night that I took melatonin, I took 10 milligrams and uh, we, we were talking a little bit about it on breakfast stream today and I had so many people being like, that's a lot. Uh, I agree. I agree, that is a lot. Uh, the reason I know is because the next day, I was still tired and took naps and slept kind of throughout the day. It ended up not being a bad thing because I was just so sleep deprived. Any sleep I could get was good sleep. But uh, sub subsequent times I've taken the melatonin, I've, take, I've taken just five milligrams. Um, and that seems to work all right for me. Um, it's something I don't plan to take forever, um, but you know, in for now, while I'm still trying to make sure I can get to sleep and stay asleep and, and, and if I wake up I can fall back asleep easily um, I'm probably going to continue taking it for a little bit longer and uh, I am still on the no caffeine challenge still haven't had any um, I don't th I honestly don't think that that's been like caffeine has affected me very much like I, I'm not sure that I need to do this it's just nice to, to say you know what I'm not even going to have I'm not even gonna have that. I'm, I'm gonna try and do everything I can in my power to to reset things and make sure I can get my schedule back in order. And um, you know, it's working. Uh, it really is working and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Okay, now I'm done. Thank you so much for watching. And, that, and that's it. Let's meet back tomorrow, <laughs> shall we?